This video shows how to include and exclude filtered data when you're using functions in Excel. So in this example, I am pretending that I own a gardening store and I have all kinds of different things that I'm selling to different customers and different amounts and different prices, etc. And different days of the week because I might want to filter data by what things am I selling on certain days and it might help me change displays in my store on those days, right? So in this example, I have added filters. And in case you don't know how to do that, if you go to the data tab, you just click this filter button and then I just actually removed it. If I go back in and do it again, all you do is click it and now it turns into these little down arrows next to each different column title that you have. So in this example for items purchased, if I click this, I can choose which items I want to see as filtered. So I could unselect everything if I wanted. And if I want to say, okay, who bought gardening bags? I just click this and these are the clients that have bought those. So you can do that for any type of thing. You could add different things in here. You could say, I wanna know who's buying my plant things, um, both plants and plant food, right? And these would be all the different things. And then if you wanted to, you could even sort by client or customer, however you wanna call it. Um, and then you could see the totals and things like that. So there's a lot of things in here. So this is a really long list and it's specifically a long list so that you can see the benefit of filtering the data out. One of the things that makes filters so great is that it allows you to take lots of data and shrink your list. So like say here, not very many people are probably going to buy a wheelbarrow. So this is how quickly I can find who bought a wheelbarrow rather than sorting and scrolling or just scrolling and trying to find them. So that's some of the benefits of a filter. However, sometimes filters can change your data. So I'm going to go back to everything. I'm going to turn everything back on and I'm going to go to the end by hitting, I just did control end, which is a keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to say, say maybe this is sales for like the first quarter of my year. That's this, you know, this is fake data, but it gives you an idea. So I want to know what's the sum total of everything I've sold. So this is pretty easy. I just go to auto sum and it's going to automatically select this entire column of data because there's numbers all the way up, prices, and so I don't have to really do anything to it and I'm just going to hit enter. And you can verify that here. It says E2 to E336 and also up here, just so you know, even though you can't really see it going. So then I hit the enter key to accept that formula. Now if I were to go back to the top, which I'm going to do control home instead of scrolling, and I filtered some data out, so I'm going to unselect everything and I'm going to say, I just want to know what kind of like perishable supply type stuff. So plant food and flowers and shrubs, sand and soil. Those are the only things I want to know about. And I'm going to say, okay. And this is still a pretty good size list. You can see by the arrow here. So if I do control end again, you'll notice my sum still has the exact same amount. So even though this list doesn't have my wheelbarrows or my border stones or gloves or my garden bags or any of those things, it still says that the sum total of what, I've, uh, what I have sold so far is the entire amount. It is still including every single cell. So if you look over here, you can see the numbers are skipping. So like 327 is being filtered out, 320, 321 and all the way to 315 is being filtered out. So that's how you know you have filtered out data. That's one way of knowing is that these numbers are um, skipping, right? If I go to the top again, you'll also see that instead of a down arrow right here, this has the little filter icon and it's letting you know something's filtered out. So it, what if, but what if I wanted to know what's the sum total of all these things here that I filtered? Cause I filtered it for a reason. I want to know how much is this worth? How much of my business is potentially this worth? There's another way to do this. So this is going to be through a subtotal and a subtotal is going to let you exclude the amounts that in the data that's filtered out. So it's a more representative view of what you're actually looking at right now. And so the way to do that is instead of sum, I'm going to say equals subtotal. That's what I want. That's the function I want. And then I'm going to put in parentheses and you'll see these numbers right here. So these are functions that subtotal can so that's, that it'll process. So you can do an average account, um, all these different things in here, some right, you know, average, whatever. So I'm going to actually do some because I still want some. So what I would do is I'm going to type a nine here for that. And then I type the cells that are appropriate. So it's going to be the same number of cells. I'm still going to do E2 and then I'm doing the colon. So it's everything from the first one through the last one, E336. Oh, sorry, 333. And then I'm going to do an end parenthesis 
And so if you look at the entire function now, I have subtotal of this function of subtotal, which means sum, from E2 to E33. And I'm going to hit enter. And this data is vastly different than that. So this is how with a sum, if you use a standard sum, it is going to add up all of your data, even if you have data filtered out in from your view. It's still going to give you a total of whatever, whatever thing you're trying to capture. Like if I wanted to do sums over here, I could actually move these two. So with these moved over here, I could do the same thing here. So what I can do is I can say I wanted sum of all the things I've sold and not subtotal, but I want sum. And that will give me, that will give me everything I've sold. Oops, hang on a second. That should not have the nine in here. That was from the subtotal. This is going to give me everything I've sold the entire time. And then if I go down here and I do the subtotal here, and I do the same thing, begin parenthesis, I do the nine because I'm summing. And then I say, oops, D, not E, D2 colon, so all the way through, D336 and enter and this is how many items are I've sold in my filtered data so in the plants and the soil and things like that that I've selected in the plant food 769 items have been sold in all my spreadsheets so say my quarter if we're going back to that example I've sold 1592 so this is you know almost half right so that's how you can use filtered data in a way that you still can create formulas that represent the data you're trying to represent. So that's kind of important to know the difference between how to include and exclude filtered data when you're using a function, because if you don't realize that you're still adding up all the data, like with a sum function, you might misrepresent your data. And hopefully that's helpful.